Good morning, everybody. Mark Finan here in the home weather office on this Monday morning. It is the 30th day of June, 2025. This is the morning briefing. Yeah, the last day of June. Looking out the window this morning, nice morning. It's warm, but um, there's a breeze coming through. We do have a bit of a delta breeze working, and that's going to help to lower temperatures even a little bit more. It was pretty warm this weekend. Did hit 100 on Saturday in Sacramento, although it was interesting. We hit 100 at Executive Airport, but not at Sacramento International. There was a time a week or so ago that we hit 98 at Executive, but 101 at SMF. So um, either way, it was our one and only 100 for the month of June. I do think there's going to be a bunch more as we head into July, but a lot to get through today. I'm going to talk about temperatures, um, but also going to talk about something called elevated convection. There's a chance of thunderstorms tonight, not this afternoon. Well, this afternoon in some areas, but I'm talking about tonight. Nighttime thunderstorms. I'll try to explain how and why that can happen. So let's uh, start with how we have done so far this month. This is the climate summary for Sacramento. And there is the 100 we did on Saturday and then dropped down to 95 yesterday. And today will be a little bit lower than that. All in all, the month is still coming in right at average 0.1 above average. Really, it really has been a, an average month in terms of the temperatures. However, below average in terms of the number of days that are above 100, the average is four for the month. Um, so yeah, all in all, a pretty comfortable month of June. Can't complain too much about that, but uh, we still have July and August to get through for all the heat. Let's uh, see what's happening from above this morning. We have clear skies in the valley, nice marine layer here, but you'll notice a little deck of clouds here, a little deck of clouds down in here. And this one arches all the way off into northern uh, Nevada and off into Utah. And this is interesting because we do have moisture coming up from the south. So this is the, um, the, the color enhanced view of the satellite, if you will. I'm going to show you the water vapor view. And the reason I want to show you the water vapor view is you can clearly see the circulation here. So you can see clouds going this way, then this way, and then this way. So this is the water vapor loop. I'm not crazy about the color table that they use, but um, either way, it, you can get a better idea of the overall circulation. And the reason I wanted to show you that is that when you go to the 500 millibar chart, you can see it here done graphically. So there's that low spinning around here. And we have this flow coming up from the south, not a ton of moisture in it, but enough that we'll have some moisture in the atmosphere. And you combine that with instability, and we have the chance of some thunderstorms in some areas later on today. And I'll, again, I'll show you that here in a second. Before I get to that, though, let's just see what this low is going to do for us over the next uh, couple of days. It kind of spins around, uh, helping to keep temperatures in check, moves inland. And by the time we get into, what day is this? This is Thursday. So Thursday, mini little ridging here. So look for temperatures to go back up a little bit. Another trough comes through to lower temperatures slightly over the weekend, but will still be plenty warm. But this all in all is still a nice pattern. We do, however, start to see the beginnings of the four corners high right in here. And just look at the circulation here. The four corners high, instead of being here, it looks like it's shifted a little bit farther to the east, which is good. That helps to keep temperatures in California in check. And then as we head into, this should be around the 7th, I think. This is the 8th. Uh, so we still have the trough around, but watch what happens after the 8th. So <clears throat> after that, now we have big ridge moving in, big flat high down here over Arizona and New Mexico. And this is a hot pattern for California. And the models are suggesting that we could see some heat, maybe starting somewhere around the 10th to 12th of this month. Also, this little guy's popping up, a little Pacific hurricane. Well, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, this pattern for California, that is not a cool pattern at all. So we'll keep an eye on that. That's, uh, you know, let's say 10 days out, we may get into some real heat. All right. All right, let's go to the HRRR and talk about the chance of thunderstorms uh, today. There's going to be a difference between the, the HRRR and the NAM nest. 
Uh, the NAM Nest has done better with some of this convection. This is this afternoon at 3, 4, 5 o'clock. So thunderstorms up here. National Weather Service did issue a red flag warning for these areas up in here. And this isn't, this isn't good because we're likely going to see some lightning with this. And uh, this is an area that is prone to lightning started fires. And the, when you get a lightning started fire, they start off in the middle of nowhere because, you know, lightning's pretty indiscriminate that way. And uh, yeah, so we'll just have to see what happens there today. That, that's not a good, good pattern at all. But that's at five o'clock and you would expect these are afternoon thunderstorms. All right, well, let's go ahead another few hours. Now this is, uh, uh, this is 10 o'clock. Look at these little spots here. Well, what is that? This is 10 o'clock at night. Why are we getting these little spots here? This is 11 o'clock, and then this is midnight. What's this? In Placer County, and all the way through Nevada County, and then into Butte County, little little showers pop up here and there. Well, what's what's going on with that? Um, and if we go over to this, this model has uh, a lightning, lightning density with it. And look at that. It also shows, I know it's not much, but it shows that there would be lightning in there. Uh, let me back this up a little bit to the, the five o'clock period. And you can see the lightning possibility up in here. But then as we head through the, the nighttime hours, we may get a light show that is not fireworks, but instead we could see um, some flashes of, of lightning in the valley as well. Um, we'll have to see how that plays out tonight, but it really could be quite interesting and then all of that dissipates as we go uh, through the night. Let me go back to the precip, and we'll see what that looks like for the day on Tuesday. Simulated reflectivity. Okay, so let's get back into when we might see uh, some of these showers. This is Tuesday morning, and then Tuesday afternoon, looks as though the possibility of thunderstorms is once again through Mendocino County and up through Trinity County and uh, Modoc County, those areas could see these afternoon thunderstorms once again. So the next couple of days, we do have the possibility of having lightning started fires. Also, looks like there's some activity down here south and east of Death Valley. Um, but again, that's nighttime. This is night. This is overnight convection right down in here. So how does that happen? How does that happen? Let's go over here to the uh, Nam Nest, and this shows the the Cape. So the uh, the convective available uh, potential energy. Lots of it, even at night. Now, usually when we are talking about um, Cape, it's in the afternoon, and this is five o'clock today. Big time Cape for California, over 2,000. You know, in the wintertime, we're talking about uh, Cape, you know, five, 600, and maybe getting thunderstorms. Well, now Cape is up around, you know, 2,000 in some areas. But this is a little bit different, especially during the overnight. Because when we're talking about thunderstorms that we get here during, let's say, the springtime, we're always talking about how the sun angle warms the surface and aloft we're getting colder air. So you get that steepening lapse rate from the surface up to aloft. And so the warm air down at the surface gets carried aloft. Well, this is different because now we're talking about at night the surface is actually cooling off. So this is why this is elevated convection. And I don't mean elevated as in terms of it is um, a higher amount of convection. It is, its origin is at a higher elevation. So for that, let's uh, bring in a virtual sounding here. And this is uh, for late tonight. So down here at the surface, there is an inversion. You don't get rising air there at all. But what you do is, is you get a loft. And then here, uh, up above 700 millibars, uh, this is probably up around, uh, let's, let's call that, like, so let's say 12,000 feet. Well, then you do have, um, this is where you're getting the moisture and, and all the lift is going on up in this area here. And the LCL, the lifted, lifting condensation level, is here just below 700 millibars. So this is still up around... 8,000 feet. So this is, it's it's here and above that you start to see the cloud cover. So 8,000 feet and above. So this is where all the activity is taking place, not down here. 
So that's why we get sometimes we get these dry thunderstorms over the valley during the summer months because this is this isn't surface based it's elevation based. And let me go back to to the cape here uh, from the Nam nest. What I'm showing you here is the most unstable the most unstable layer. So that's what this product shows. If I show you the surface based cape cape there isn't any. You see these hatched areas, there's convective inhibition. So if you were looking at this to get surface-based convection, you'd say nothing's going to happen. But if you look at the most unstable area, you've gone through that area of convective inhibition and you are actually going to see um, some lifting going on. But that's how you get the thunderstorms that get lightning. And we often talk about getting dry lightning. Well, that's what could happen tonight. Uh, we will see there will be some rain most likely in the showers and thunderstorms that happen at 5 o'clock up around the Oregon uh, state line, farther north of Redding. So we could get some rain, but probably not beneficial enough to, to prevent any fires, potential fires from lightning. Um, for the valley, uh, if we do get that light show tonight, maybe as early as 9 o'clock, maybe as late as 2 in the morning, somewhere in there, um, it'll be interesting to see how it all takes place. We could see some activity maybe in El Dorado County. You might be able to see, the, the cool thing about seeing lightning at night around here is that you see it for miles. So if you're in downtown Sacramento, you can see lightning that's, that's flashing up around Grass Valley. It's, it's, um, it's an amazing show. So we'll have to keep an eye on that tonight. It could be a very interesting night. Otherwise, uh, today, the next couple of days, relatively comfortable. We'll have to keep our eye on the potential for heat in about, oh, let's say about a week and a half. We may get into some... Uh, real summertime heat. So really interesting day for the last day of June with the possibility of this convection later on today and tonight. That's everything I've got for you this morning. Make it a great day. I'll talk with you later.